She was 23 when we got married, I was 25. We knew each other for about a year before we got married. Her parents are good people, and they love me like their own son, my parents loved her as well. I just graduated from college at the time with a master's degree in engineering, she had a degree in psychology, and it seemed like the only thing she got out of her degree was to manipulate me. Before we got married, she was the perfect girlfriend, no red flag whatsoever, I thought she was a unicorn, virgin, great family values, great cook, cleans, even now in her late 40s she looks like she is in her mid-30s, an all-American girl, everybody loves her. Her smile brightens up the room, she can look at someone and has a gift that she can know 90% about them and make an assessment. She is good at reading body language like no one I have ever seen before, I remember on our wedding day, watching her as she walks towards the altar thinking how lucky I was to have her, thinking she was the best thing that have ever happened to me, now I am not so sure. I really don't know how things would have gone so wrong. In the beginning everything was perfect, she even lost her v-card on our honeymoon together, I was her first, she was my second, nine months after our wedding she gave birth to our now 25 year old son, we had two daughters after that. About 10 years after our youngest was born she became really close with one of my former clients. My wife area of interest is in charity work, so when my former client told me about the charity project that he was working on to benefit his community, I mentioned that my wife works with non-profit organization as well, he suggested an introduction to build his network and I made the biggest mistake of my life by introducing him to my wife. In situations like that most men wouldn't think anything of it, you wouldn't think your wife would end up being unfaithful, heck I trusted her, she was the love of my life, she is not that type of woman. When I told my wife that my client was looking for volunteers to work part-time on his charity organization that he opened as a side project to help build schools and educate youth in his community, she volunteered to work for him. I didn't tell her because I wanted her to volunteer, I was just making a conversation and didn't think she would be interested because I thought she had her hands full with other volunteer work and taking care of the household. As time went on, she became really close to him and went to work on his charity organization, at some point she quit, because she suspected that there was something sketchy about his charity organization, but they later reconcile at least that was the story she told me. I should have suspected that something wasn't right about their relationship, but I was too blind to see it. I mean, I didn't find anything remarkable about him, in terms of looks he was shorter than me, I am better looking, although he is about 10 years younger, very energetic, and motivated. He had a heavy accent, and was an immigrant from Pakistan and he is a Muslim, whom once had two wives but one of his wives passed away, so he now had one. Maybe I was naive, but I didn't think my wife a blonde hair, blue eye, all-American girl would be remotely into somebody like that. She is the type that would go on about how polygamy is oppressive to women, face covering is a weapon of control etc, etc, I thought she saw him as a charity case although he is a hard-working man I will give him that, his wealth doesn't come close to mine, I would consider him a middle class, which is not a bad thing, hence, I saw him as no threat at all. He must have seen my wife as a perfect candidate because she is very social and well-connected and would help him host charity events and fundraise using her connections. She made little money from that and her many other charity organizations because they were non-profit, so I was the sole breadwinner of the household, and I have done very well for myself. I thought it was odd for her to be spending so much time with him but there is always an excuse or reason, once again didn't suspect anything because my wife is a good liar, she had my number and know how to manipulate me, to believe in whatever she says so I saw this as one of her pet projects. When she is not doing any charity work, she is primarily a stay-at-home mom so I rationalized that it would be beneficial to use that as pastime. Fast forward 6 years that she has been working with this man, let's call him Ahmed, I notice that her attitude and behavior slowly change. I am a mild-mannered person and would let her get her way on things rather than stand my ground. I am the kind that believed that a happy wife is a happy life, but in my wife's case if you gave my wife a foot, she would take a mile. Slowly, our bedroom sex dried up to non-existent, within the last two years I find myself begging her for sex and she flat out refuses, I also noticed that she wasn't doing chores around the house like she used to. It didn't happen all of a sudden, but it was just a gradual process, things like cleaning the house, making dinner, Household activities were left undone, also she could spend time on the charity work with this fellow, and hang out with friends. When I brought this to her concern, she will get very defensive, and we would have a big fight about it. It has gotten to the point where I avoid confrontation with her, she won that battle because I decided to hire a maid, so now I have an expensive house with a maid and a stay-at-home wife that does nothing but work on a god knows what charity organization for this shady guy, and dead bedroom. Slowly she became more assertive in the relationship with having things her way, 
I could fight back but I didn't have the energy or the will, I just let her have her way in the name of peace. I was too busy focused on other things that I thought were more important. I was trying to build and keep our wealth, so I worked non-stop. We used to go out on date night, try new restaurants and other exciting things, which was mostly all her idea, I just tagged along, she couldn't do without those things, but after she started working for him I noticed that she stopped asking me to join her for all those things. At first I didn't really care much because I was kind of an introverted person and enjoy my quiet time, her excuse was that she was going out with friends and hosting more volunteer events. Then three years ago was when they had a falling out because she thought the charity organization was shady, she said that she would stop working with him, I didn't care to get much detail about the shadiness because at that time he was no longer my client and I trust my wife's judgment about it, but strangely enough about two and a half years ago they reconciled. I didn't press her about the shadiness of the business, and she brushed it aside saying that they ironed things out and now they are totally legit. She was like, nothing to see here I was like great. Then within the three weeks of the reconciliation period, she had a one-week business trip overseas with someone she claimed was an advocacy director and they were meeting some foreign dignitaries to build their network. I looked into it, and sure enough the city she claimed to be going to had some kind of an international event going on. I didn't drop her at the airport, so I don't know if she went where she said she did. She was really into the trip, and I was happy for her, I had no reason to suspect any mischief, although I found it strange, but I still fully trusted her. Fast forward to 2018, we had a huge fight sometime in June 2018. We had a tension in the marriage, because I felt like she wasn't performing her wifely duties, she was too involved with side projects, and it almost led to a divorce. She became very bitter and completely nasty towards me into the fall around November 2018. I should mention that during the five to six years she worked with him our sex life slowly declined until two years ago when she completely refused to be intimate with me. Our sex life was never great as she had no experience and she kept rejecting me, I thought she was asexual and after having to pressure her for two years and getting it when she feels like it after weeks on me pleading and procrastinating, I gave up, and realized that I may have to live with the hand I was dealt with, literally. So, I focused on my work and my kids. I gained a lot of weight cause I was miserable, eating and drinking and gained 50 plus pounds, I felt unattractive and felt terrible. Around early 2019 she told me she was unhappy and that she no longer felt like she was in love with me, I asked her if there was someone else or if she has been having an affair and she emphatically said no, she claimed that I was not the same person she fell in love with long ago, that I have changed, she said I wasn't trying hard anymore, she complained that I wasn't taking her out and doing things together with her and that we were drifting apart. I told her that she has been rejecting any romantic gesture in the bedroom and that have caused me to focus on my work and kids, but I promised to do better and to spend more time together. I even suggested that we try marriage counseling and maybe take more vacations together. The following day, after she told me that she wasn't happy with the marriage I made some effort to spend more time with her. I started doing random romantic gestures like bringing her flowers, taking her to her favorite restaurant, but it was still difficult for her to be intimate with me, I thought I was doing something wrong, I tried many relationship books, but all were garbage. Until I read The Married Man Sex Life Primer by Athol K, it breaks down women's sexual behavior and offer practical tools of playful sexy and romantic moves women will find charming and engaging and it completely opened my eyes. Mostly in terms of evolutional psychology of women, after reading the book I became more aware, especially about relationship dynamics and reason why female fall out of love, which led me to be suspicious that my wife may be having an affair based on her behavior and characteristics pointed out in the book. Behavior that she has been doing for years but I never thought twice about it, she would awkwardly hide her phone when texting, run to the other room to pick up a phone call, lie unnecessary and go missing for hours. I started journaling and keeping track of what she did where she said she went and what we said to each other, I did this for 8 months. In late 2019, I started working out and up to now lost over 40 pounds and I'm in better shape now than when we got married. Around September 2019, she was working on her laptop in bed, she decided to go take a shower, left her laptop open, I took that opportunity to search through her browsing history and email, I felt guilty but this was the opportunity I have been waiting for. I had some unanswered questions, like details about the one-week overseas trip she took, times that she went missing and wouldn't answer her phone and was unaccounted for. I needed to confirm some of the things she told me that I knew was a lie, I came across some very surprising searches, found out that she took a trip to a tropical island and romantic getaways right about two and a half years ago, and not to the city she claimed to have went to, I wondered who she was going on this romantic trip with, still didn't suspect that it was with Ahmed, that was how clueless I was. 
that night I was 90% sure she was having an affair. I felt like I have probable cause to dive in deeper. About a week or two later I managed to get access to her phone when it was unlocked, ran to the bathroom with it without her noticing, I looked through her text message, and saw a name I didn't recognize that she frequently texts to, I took screenshots of as much text messages as I could, would have taken more but she started looking for her phone, I could hear her screaming about it from where I was in the bathroom. I text all the pictures to myself and deleted the screenshot from her phone and evidence that I sent it to my phone. I return her phone back to her and she didn't suspect anything, later I went through the text messages it wasn't clear whether there was an affair going on, but there were definite signs of affection and romantic gesture, meet up at restaurant and hotels, but still there was a room for her to claim that it was all business meetings, which is what she did when I confronted her. I confronted her and the first words out of her mouth was tell me what you know, she was more concerned about how I found out than how it made me feel. I was stupid enough to reveal to her how I found out because it caused her to hide her phone, and everything went underground. She was able to explain her way out of everything. I have to admit that she had my number, she had a way to convincing and gaslighting me to believe her BS. She denied everything and came up with a crazy explanation. That night, she initiated intimacy, something she had never done in over two years, almost like a magician final act of deception. I chose to believe her but still watched her like a hawk. In the beginning of October, she said she had to go find herself and go out with friends and possibly take a vacation on her own which was unusual. I asked her a question which she flat out lied to me and then the game was on. I caught her lying to me almost daily and it was heartbreaking as I never once questioned her fidelity before, everything was happening so fast, looking back, I wanted to believe her, I wanted to rationalize that it was just one big misunderstanding, I accepted her lie because I didn't want to believe that it was over. End of June pandemic restrictions started lifting and she starts going out with friends, she was going out every day doing it a little too much, so I decided to buy and install a voice activated recorder in her vehicle. Within a week I not only confirmed her affair, but I also confirmed that she was having an affair with that scumbag Ahmed. This man was not only married, but he also wanted my wife to replace his deceased second wife and she was entertaining the idea, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I could tell from her voice that she enjoys the idea and encouraged him, like some sort of strange foreplay. It was devastating hearing how she talked to him, and to top it all off I heard them having sex in the back seat of her vehicle. My whole life felt like it was imploding, I had to listen to the audio three times before my brain believed they were actually having sex, I have never heard her moan like that in six effing years, and there she was, having sex like a cheap skank with a guy that wishes that she was his second wife. I didn't understand how a mother of three children, an outstanding member of the community a Christian woman, would reduce and demean herself to such lows. I was so devastated I confronted her about it when she came home that evening. She was caught off guard, no excuse this time, I had the sex recording playing on the speakers, she wanted me to turn it off because people would hear it. She admitted to everything, begging for forgiveness. That was when it dawned on me that she had no respect for me in this relationship, I asked her how long this had been going on, and she lied again saying that it only started a few months ago. I told her that I don't believe her because it's been almost 8 months since I found those text messages that she lied about, then she changed her story that it's been going on for only about a year, I told her that we should separate and figure things out. She pleaded with me saying that I was partly to blame because I was too focused on work and that I was the one that introduced him to her, she told me how the separation would devastate the family and shame us to the entire community, she knew exactly what to say to manipulate me. I took pride in myself as a perfect married man, I had a good standing in the community, everyone looked up to me. If a word of this gets out, the embarrassment would not only be shared by her, but it would also be on me too, as well as my kids. I felt like I was dealing with the manipulative narcissist who cares for nobody but herself, I threatened to separate from her but at the end of the day, I failed to pull the trigger. Although I never forgave her despite her pleading, I thought she would change, she told me that she still loves me. Another way I rationalized staying with her in my mind was that my youngest daughter was about to turn 18. After she goes to college then I would be free to divorce her, which made sense at the time but in hindsight was a terrible idea. The first week of August we spent 3 to 5 hours a day talking like we never have in our entire history together. We had discussions about things we never discussed before, our thoughts, feelings, sex fantasies, etc., she initiated sex almost every day, something she had never done in years. She was highly sexual on how she spoke to me, and this went on for weeks. I am not stupid I know she is trying to manipulate me but still the line was blurry, I wanted to believe that it was real, I was extremely infatuated towards her and found it odd I would feel this way. 
Then second week of August we went to couples counseling where I made it clear that she needed to end it with a fair partner and go no contact with him, but apparently, he was and still is out of the country. I told her I am going to tell his wife, but she pleaded not to as she didn't want to affect his kids. Long story short, I believe she had a six or five years affair with Ahmed before his second wife passed away, he tried to convince my wife to be his third wife when she refused he got married had a bunch of kids. They broke it off three years ago for some reason I don't know if the story about the charity being shady is true, or if it was some ruse to throw me off, but the affair started back two and a half years ago when he kept calling her for months and she finally responded. He apologized to her then they got together and for over two years now they have been having unprotected sex, it could have been in the past as well, but she says it was protected which I am not sure I believe. She also admits to BJ but not taking it from the back. Although I was trying everything I could to reconcile, I should have known better because I was codependent on someone that added no value to my life. I really tried to forgive her but deep inside I knew she would never be the innocent traditional virtues woman I used to think she was. We would be spending time together and I will get trigger and just blow up. I felt like this whole thing was a bad dream that I can't wake up from. Her cheating has wounded me psychologically and trying to reconcile with her was like putting a band-aid on a broken kneecap. This past weekend, she told me she was going to be honest with me because I confronted her with all the lies she has been telling me. I told her I need access to her phone as she told me he contacted her and she told him they need to talk in person to end it, but when I asked her to see the message thread, she said she deleted it. She also said that I need to trust her to build back the relationship because she is now telling me the truth. I told her I can't just trust her blindly as she has been lying to me for six years and wouldn't even admit to when the affair started. Almost everything I know about the affair I have to find it out myself. She wanted everything done her way and I am drawing the line. I have been very cold to her the last few days as a result and she has noticed, she hopes we can get past this and live happily the rest of our lives, but she doesn't know how badly this has affected me. She said she is very relieved this came out, but she never told me, I had to play detective to find out. I had her get tested for STDs and looks like everything came back okay, but we just had a little bit of a cancer scare which we are dealing with her, and I also had myself checked out as well. I told her that if she was unhappy when she started the affair, she should have just divorced me instead of being a coward, she said she didn't want to hurt me and the kids, but I said when you were about to screw him did you think about hurting me? She said she made the biggest mistake of her life, I said no, you made hundreds of choices to be deceptive, you didn't make one mistake. I think if she had a one night stand I could probably see it, but this woman made years of lies early on and then the past two and a half years again with the same person. Who knows if she had other affairs in between, although she denied it when questioned, to make matters worse she denied it to me while doing it with him. All the while I was thinking she was asexual, while she spread herself open for him. From the outside everyone thinks we have the perfect marriage, top 1% income, great kids, multi-million dollar house in one of the best areas in the country, great vacations, high-end vehicles etc., in the end I am empty inside, because what I really wanted was my wife and I could never have her, no matter what or how much I spent, this led me to overeating and alcoholism and a slippery slope as a result of her non-transparency. This weekend I am heavily leaning towards divorce, and I have set up a meeting with a lawyer in a week. I still have many decades to live, and I know I am the prize here and she is starting to age, I am now in the best shape of my life and getting better. Although, I still truly love her, I am disgusted by her and don't think I can ever trust her again. The innocence of our marriage has been destroyed and it's so sad, this whole thing has hardened me, and I am worried that may not be able to trust any woman or ever marry again. The original poster drew attention that he married a virgin and he was going on about how she was supposed to be a unicorn. Generally, if a woman grew up in a sheltered life, chances are that her body count would be low compared to a woman that didn't grow up in a sheltered life. But that doesn't mean that she wouldn't cheat in the relationship. She's still a woman. She still have the same lust. She still have the same desire for masculine dominant presence. That's biological. Getting married to a virgin doesn't give you the freedom to be a simp. You must demonstrate a masculine frame in the relationship. For her to continually be attracted to you, you must demonstrate leadership. We have heard stories about women that came from sheltered or traditional background that grew up to be the most promiscuous women, even going as far as being porn stars. 
why men prefer women with low body count, it doesn't mean that she wouldn't cheat on you. Women will most likely go for men that demonstrate masculine trait because in her high brain, it's all about survival and replication. If you find yourself using phrases like happy wife, happy life, or you would say things like, oh, my wife will kill me. That is a sign that you are slowly, if you haven't already relinquished the control of that relationship. Those phrases, although enduring, are signs that a man have lost control of his woman and is afraid of his woman. And what happens when you lose control? She stops being afraid of you. She stops being intimidated by you. She sees you as one of her children. She sees you as being easily manipulated. She thinks that you are not masculine enough. She stops getting wet for you. She starts looking outside the marriage, looking for leadership, looking for a man that is strong enough to stand up to her.